Good morning. The car market in Australia has always been a unique market. It's always been much more similar to Asian markets than a European or North American one. There are basically no trade restrictions there on cars from China. And so we can look at what's happening in Australia and perhaps imagine what the U.S. market might look like without high tariffs and import restrictions on Chinese built cars. This headline and chart says it all. Australians are buying Chinese cars like crazy while trade barriers are going up everywhere else. This is a chart of the vehicle sales in Australia by factory source. Japan is number one. That's Thailand at number two. China just passed South Korea last year and passed Germany and the U.S. in 2020. This is perhaps by design. If the United States automakers is to keep competition out of the United States, and just forget about competing outside the United States. The success of China in the Australian market has been parabolic, I could say, up nearly 50 times in just 10 years with more models on the way. Digging through the data more deeply, we see that's in electric vehicles that China is just killing everyone else. If we look at the numbers here, Germany about tripled its sales year over year from 2022 to 2023. Korea also had a nice jump, so did England and Japan. On a percentage basis, they're doing great. But China's just sucking all the air out of the market there. They nearly tripled as well, but have more sales volumes of electric vehicles than from all the other countries combined times five. And digging still deeper, just in the China numbers, and it's Tesla. Most of the Chinese-made cars sold in Australia are from Tesla. BYD is an all Chinese brand. They may be the most vertically integrated company on the planet right now, by the way. MG and Volvo are European brands, but building in China. And this is also by design. Car makers who are serious about global competition, they set up factories in China. And this strategy works. BYD and other car makers are coming to Australia and Tesla is gonna be fighting for every point of market share forever but at least they're in the battle. Marina Zhang is quoted here, and she says what our viewers here already know, China owns the supply chains. China's supply chains are shorter, and if you wanna have access to them, you need to put a factory right next door, like Tesla did. Tesla has a gigafactory in Shanghai that can produce 750,000 cars per year. Ms. Zhang goes on, though, and explains the realities of the China market in a simple way that I like. It's true that the Chinese government throws a lot of support into its manufacturing sectors, not just in electric vehicles, but in everything. But we in the West tend to misunderstand, to mischaracterize the process. Hundreds of electric vehicle companies were started here in China, but after a decade of brutal competition, we have just a handful who are left standing. She explains government policies didn't hand pick the winners and the losers. It was left up to the competition in the market and the nature of companies to consolidate to survive. This is a really good distillation of how things play out in Chinese manufacturing, no matter what the product is. Back to Australia, where the government agencies are taking a hands-off approach to tariffs there. Spokesperson here is talking without really saying anything, except that trade policies will be enacted according to Australia's national interest. National interest means different things to different people. In the United States, national interest means saying and doing things to protect unionized auto workers in Michigan and Wisconsin because those two states are important in presidential elections. In Australia, national interest means affordable cars and lots of consumer choice. First time car buyers may be interested in saving the planet or they may be interested in saving money. Either way, they're gonna be looking for an EV that probably came from a Chinese factory. China has a supply chain for the electronics and especially for the batteries. Here's Ms. Zhang again. Australians can buy expensive EVs from Germany or America or Chinese ones that cost less. 
There are new models coming in with even lower prices. There's a price war in Australia, which would certainly be in the beneficial interest of the 99% of the population that buys cars instead of builds them. Here's a new car, the Florid, which insiders expect to be priced under $10,000, and a pickup for $16,009, which comes with a three-year warranty up to 100,000 kilometers. And when these cars hit the Australian market, the other companies will need to adjust too. More competition, better quality offerings at lower prices. That's what a well-functioning market looks like, and it's the kind we should have. This is the glass bridge in Zhangjiajie. It's in Hunan. Be good. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven.